All right, you guys, I know that I just posted a first impression Friday a couple of days ago, but after I posted that, McCall's released their early spring and I don't know, I'm just ready for spring and eager to see some new patterns. So I am abandoning my first impression Friday schedule and we're gonna do a first impression Sunday because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Um, so before we jump into those patterns though, I saw on Instagram that McCall's has made some changes to their brand. First of all, you can see that the website looks a little bit different. This is like huge um, little banner image here. And then it's kind of separated out into smaller banners as you go down. Secondly, they started naming their patterns. So that's a real indication that the indie sewing pattern community world business is infiltrating the big four, which is kind of amazing. Um, so they'll still have their like numbers in 7809 or whatever, but they'll also have like a name, like the Addison top or whatever, which I just think is wild. And I'm so eager to hear what you guys think of that, especially those of you that are like, oh, gee, big four pattern people. Um, I mean, what do we think? I am a little bit on the fence. I kind of wish that they would just, you know, be confident and stay in their lane. But I also know that people love to call patterns by names and how that is helpful for people. Um, me particularly, I can't remember a pattern name or number to save my life. So you know, it doesn't really affect me either way, but, um, but I'm, I don't know. I'm just eager to hear what everyone's opinion about that is. All right. So let's jump into these patterns, the photos. Let's talk about that real quick. Look at all of these backgrounds. That's really cool. So they started taking their photos outside. It looks like, and a lot fewer of them are done in the studio. So that's kind of a nod to the whole like influencer trend, what photos need to look like nowadays, the quality of photos, what people are wanting to see. Um, so that's really cool and interesting. All right, so we're gonna jump right into this first one. This is the Josie. I guess this just called the Josie. See, hashtag Josie. And then you can use this hashtag, hashtag Josie McCalls um, on social media. So does that mean people are going to stop using hashtag M8030? I don't know. I guess for a while people will be using both. Um, another interesting thing is there's no more description of the pattern, which is really annoying. Unless they put it somewhere else. I'll keep looking. Uh, but okay. Okay. Now, for the pattern, it is a super cute, if I'm being honest, little uh, kind of like a take on a shirt dress. You've got your mandarin stand collar, button front placket, but a grown on sleeve. You've also got this like yoke with gathers. And then I'm assuming there's no waist seam and you can cinch it in with this self-made belt. It's got this curved hem with a high slit, which is really cool. This just looks very easy to wear. Yeah, here it is without the belt, a little bit pajama-y. Um, you can also put on the full collar here. Then we also have, that's kind of like the version the model is wearing, but I think the hemline is straight here and not um, the curved with the split. Oh, and a little side seam pocket, okay. Yeah, this is great for all of those little like lightweight shirtings that we have in our pattern stashes. It was gonna be great out of anything 100% cotton or linen or you know any of those easy breezy fabrics. This is also something that will transition really well into summer. Um, so I'm here for it. Look at the logo, that's different. And they also have Josie McCall's um, on the pattern front as well. Show your make, use the hashtag provided. So they're trying to encourage people um, to post about it on social media. 
All right, so yeah, we've just got the different collars and then the two different hymns. Cute. The back has some gathers too, which I think I failed to mention. Oh, and then there's also a cuff on one and not the other. Were there, hers did not have it, but this one did. I don't know, I kind of like the cuff. All right, uh, shirting fabrics, poplin, linen, seersucker. Yeah, 100% all of those. Belton, uh, buttons, uh, D-rings to make the belt. It comes in alphanumeric sizing. Here is the yardage. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. Just about two yards for all, two to two and a quarter yards. And we all know that you can, you can do some pattern Tetris and get it to fit um, into two yards if that's what you've got in your stash. I mean, even the belt, uh, belted versions don't add to the uh, fabric requirements, so that's good. C is a little bit more because it's longer and it has that curved hem too. And then here are, oh, no finished garment measurements at all, which you know what I have said time and time again, I would rather there be none than to only be the length or whatever. So if they're not going to start including bust, waist, hip finish garment measurements, then fine with me. Leave it all off. <laughs> Look at this really pretty illustration. So we're used to them looking like this one, but look at that. That is very cool. All right, for the dress, we've got, let's see. Yep, this is the Sasha. This is so weird. This is the Sasha. Um, still no description. So I guess I'm going to have to, thank goodness y'all have me, right? <laughs> so we've got like a really high v-neck which is kind of cool and then this asymmetrical like button wrap it's like a wrap that's buttoned which honestly I actually think is pretty cool I kind of stay away from uh they're called surplus bodices whenever they're like the faux wrap uh because they can you know be so low but this one with the buttons built in is kind of cool it might be causing some pulling over here but it's still cool. And then you've got these huge little bubble sleeves, which in this fabrication looks really great in like a solid white, a solid blue. That would also look really, really good. But you can also go very little house on the prairie if you get something too kind of granola. So, but yeah, and then you have the buttons on the, you know, skirt side. So that's cool. And then Here's the surplus bodice, although this might be a full actual wrap. Uh, it might not have a waist seam or I don't know. I don't know how we can tell without the description, but this one has this really fun ruffle, which is cute again in the right fabric. This feels like a little bit longer of a sleeve, but still puffy and balloon like with a little cuff on the bottom. And then this, look at these, these illustrations are really pretty. I am loving, loving them. Yeah, that's really, really cool. It feels very young and fresh, so that's neat. Um, okay, so this, again, I think feels like a longer sleeve. Hard to tell that if this is a wrap or not. I'm thinking yes, because of the skirt. This version's really pretty. I can imagine it in a chalet or a crepe. Um, and being really, really gorgeous, even with the folder sleeve. So here's our girl again. Some back darting. The shape of the skirt is really nice too. All right, so here is... Okay, so this makes me feel like it's a faux wrap because the belt is separate. I don't, I guess there's like, maybe that's sewn into the side seam. I'm guessing that's what's happening. Uh, let's see how many buttons, seven buttons, and she's got seven buttons. So there's no buttoning on the inside. There is for C a ribbon. Let me go to this photo. So the one she's wearing has some kind of 
one yard of one inch wide ribbon. Actually, that makes me feel like it ties on the inside. Yeah, all of these have one inch wide ribbon, which makes me feel like it's not sewn in to the side seam or waist seam. It's actually, it ties on the inside and then you wrap the front around your body and then tie it again. So, all right, they're calling for crepe and chalet. Yes, cotton blends, that's probably what she's wearing. Again, really great in linen, anything with cotton in it, honestly. And stable knits. You have the 6 to 14 and 14 to 22, so no change in the size ranges. And then your fabric requirements um, kind of varied, 2 and 5 eighths up to 3 and a quarter, depending on your size. Uh, that's for dress and sash A. Is that the one with the ruffles? Yeah, okay, so that makes sense. And then B and C are kind of comparable. All right, and no finished garment measurements again. So you'll have to go pick up your pattern to see those. Do y'all like the logo? I like the logo. Especially if, like I'm remembering Simplicity's logo changed too, if the logos are going to speak to the type of consumer that they are targeting, like, for example, if McCall's is supposed to be like a uh, certain age range, I don't know, I would think, I mean, there really is no age range, but if they're trying to speak to people who dress, you know, somewhat conservative, not too young, not too matronly, that's what this feels like to me. You know what I mean? All right, we've got... Another dress. This is why I love spring so much. So many dresses. Okay, so we have a scoop front. Oh, this is the Sophia. Uh, the scoop front, um, it has the um, buttons with the little loop closure. It looks like a dart, a couple darts. Another poofy sleeve. This one has elastic. I'm not enjoying how this is curving in something's not right within here like maybe you need to add to the bodice a little bit to give this some room it's pulling um waist seam buttons all the way down and then these little insets this is definitely a look it's not really my style but it's cool and she looks cool i love her bag Here's another version with a longer sleeve and then just lace applique on the bottom. That's more me, I feel like. Oh, and then you have this beautiful version, again with the shorter sleeve. And then are these just seams? Like you just seam it all together? with uh, the buttons are undone up to the knee, which is kind of cool too. That's really pretty. And then here she is again. It's kind of cool with the see-through. Maybe it's this fabric that I'm, maybe it's the fabric, but also I don't know that I like this kind of button because look, you can even see her little bra or whatever she's wearing. There's the back. This fabric is kind of see-through. Uh, the darts seem really tall, which is good for some shaping. And then there they are. Sophia. Sophia. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. There they are. It does look like these are, you know, seams. So you could take, yeah, all they've done is instead of sewing this in a contrast fabric, it's just the self fabric, so... Not that spectacular. And also, it seems like a lot of work. Why wouldn't you just extend this, you know, and make it just one long skirt? I guess you could. You can do whatever you want. All right. Yardage-wise, lawn, crepe, gauze, and polished cotton. I mean, what does that even mean, polished cotton? Contrast, lace, and shears. So, yeah, your lightweight... Uh, 
uh, lightweight wovens here. So Shally would also be included in that as well. Um, 12 buttons, one yard of elastic and one hook and eye for the elastic sleeve band. The hook and eye though, I don't know where that goes. I'm guessing, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, six to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing. You need, you know, just under two and a half yards for A. Whoa, B, the maxi version, is almost five yards of fabric. That is a lot of dress. And then, so contrast here. So is this the lace? Which is A? Yeah, okay. Lace, you need three quarters of a yard of that. And then where's the lace for this? C. Oh, here we go. Contrast tiers for C. You need one and one eighth of a yard of lace or eyelet or whatever. So yeah, it's a lot of fabric. But this is really pretty which I guess is this, if it were all one solid. A little close fitting through here, no? Her dress is definitely see-through. All right, so that is that. A lot of fabric, but I think it would be really pretty. Really, really pretty. Okay. Next up, we have this Bryn. <laughs> this is not cute. Um, okay, so we have that surplus bodice, a big, thick piece of elastic uh, at, the, at an empire waist, and then a big kind of sleeve. There's a seam here with a big, um, with a big sleeve. High, high slit. That's cool. They have this version with a tulip sleeve and a peplum. That's kind of a nod to the 80s, might be a modern, modern 80s. They also have this version with a long sleeve and then this ruffle added on, also cute. Yeah, I like her in the little headband and the little fun bag. There's the back. Yeah, the elastic looks cool. I like the big casing that they have it in. Um, I also like this better than uh, sewing a separate belt. To me, the belt always comes undone and it's hard to keep them together in your closet and I'm always losing it. <laughs> um, the peplum version, I don't know, that could go, fabrication would be very important for that one. Here are our line drawings. I don't really feel like I missed anything. This would be super cute in just like a solid shirting, like a crisp white shirting would be really pretty. And then here's her version with the slit, which I liked in the drapier fabric. So interlock, which is a knit, um, crepe, chalet, Georgette. I think she's got like a cotton crepe on or a cotton something or another. So cotton types also. You need, oh sorry, it's three quarter inch elastic. Perfect. A, B, and C, and then B and C, B and C, B, C. Oh, okay, so they put that um, three quarter inch elastic in the sleeves as well. All right, alphanumeric sizing, extra small through extra large. And then See, not a ton of fabric for the long ones even, so that's good. Good, cute, Bryn. Um, all right, now we've got the first pattern I feel like that doesn't, that wouldn't work for summer. You know, the, all those other ones you could definitely make now and wear through, you know, September or October. So this is the Gina. It's a jacket, faux fur, uh, color blocking. 
There it is cropped. Um, hmm. Geez, look at her legs. She is very tall. Um, maybe I'm just kind of like over the fur, you know, that was like new and interesting four months ago. And now I'm just kind of over it. This, I don't know. This feels like a little girl would wear that. And not just because it's pink. Doesn't it feel like something you would find in like Carter's? <laughs> Here's the back. This is, um, what cartoon character is it? The big blue, like light sky blue guy. Big, big, big guy. I can't remember his name. Here's the back. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sewing this for early spring. I honestly wouldn't have even been able to wear that this winter because it's been so mild. Um, but maybe that's something I would circle back to in the fall. Uh, I mean, the color blocking is cool. You could certainly, you know, really elevate it from something that's a little bit cartoon character to like pink and gray, very modern, even black and white, very modern. Um, the long length, I don't know about all that fur from shoulder to high, uh, high thigh. That just seems like a lot to me. But here are our little line drawings. There is a little closure there, three, four of them here. And I'm certain that in the instructions, they tell you how to cut fur, how to sew it, um, you know, all of that stuff. So faux fur, cuddle fleece, velvet novelty fabric, and then it's fully lined. So you need two and a quarter yards of half inch elastic. That's for the hem and maybe for the sleeve as well. Elastic, hook and eye, and then elastic and hook and eye. And then alphanumeric sizing, uh, small to extra large. So the extra, extra small is not included here. You don't need a ton of the fur fabric. Uh, oh, that's for the cropped one. Okay, and then here's your lining. And then, no, sorry, here's your lining, this line here. And then this is B for the top portion and then B the lower portion. And then here's your long jacket. I don't know though. I mean, the fabric stores are gonna start to put all of this on clearance pretty soon. So maybe you could get a good deal on something, you know? It's not not cute. It's just not top of my list right now. Um, but like I said, maybe in the fall, I would circle back and want one. So buy the fur now. Keep it in your stash. I know this is going against everything I told you guys in my resolutions video, but <laughs> oh gosh, I should practice what I preach. Preach what I practice. I don't know. Um, okay, so this is the Jessa. Uh, it's a jacket pattern with this really fun asymmetrical hem. Princess seams, I think there's a waist seam, three buttons, shoulder pads I'm seeing. That's very nice. Slim, um, modern, take on a blazer, you know, collarless. Oh, here's one with like a full skirt. So you could even make this into a jacket dress coat dress coat dress is that what it's called yeah i think that's it so make it longer and then you know you don't really wear anything underneath it or you wear like leggings and a tight fitting top on underneath something like the coat becomes your outfit you don't take it on and off yeah i don't know how i feel about the asymmetrical i just think i'm not tall enough for ace i'm five five and so she has legs that are literally like her legs are probably as tall as I am just her legs. So this looks great on her, but I don't know what most people would look like. Um, I do feel like the fact that it goes up really high helps with that elongating the leg. I feel like the shoulder pads are pretty big. Um, this feels like it's kind of like 
pulling away from her a little bit. And I think it's just because it's sitting so high with those shoulder pads. That's really pretty. That's a really pretty line. All right, Jessa. So yeah, here are our options. Cute. Princess seams in the back too, and a center back seam. So lots of great shaping there. This is going to make you look like a million bucks. Very cinched. So crepe, wool crepe, satin brocades, lining fabrics, suitings, obviously. Um, then three buttons. Wait, so there are no shoulder pads. Weird. Didn't that look like a shoulder pad to you guys? It also looks like it's falling off of her shoulder a little bit too, so that could have something to do with it. Wow, that's amazing. No shoulder pads. Um, so the slim version is, yeah, under two yards. It looks like it's fully lined. This is the like more circle skirt, and then this is the asymmetrical skirt. Okay. Yeah, maybe not this version, but I could definitely see myself making this or this. And speaking of the New Year's resolutions, I don't feel like I have jackets like either one of these. I'll have to look again. But those will be cool. All right, now we've got some kind of gown. The Luna. So it looks like a simple bodice waist seam, full skirt, and like a pleated sleeve situation maybe? A little bateau neckline. This is more of a crew neckline, sleeveless, waist seam, oh, and a little train. Okay, oh, it does have a little dart here. This is the long sleeve. Yeah. Very simple design. Oh, this one has a big slit. Oh Lord, they put that, they put that Carter's jacket over. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Where, where are we going in this in early spring? Like a military ball? Do they do those in the spring? Prom, I guess. Are they trying to get a head start on prom maybe? All right, Luna. I have no need for a Luna. I, I am going nowhere. Nowhere in a dress like this. But here is the line drawings. So you have the full back option or the scoop. And then it looks like three sleeve options and two hem options. Yeah. And then all your specialty fabrics. A, they're saying border print because this is ombre. Can you see how it's going from pink to gold? And then lining fabrics, a zipper. Oh, A needs a little baby zipper because the scoop back and then a longer zipper for the other ones. All right. Oh, and it goes up to, okay, so eight to 24. So they did extend the size range on this a little bit but they eliminated the size six. So the smallest size is omitted for the larger size. All right, and then here's your fabric. Not bad, especially because those specialty fabrics can be kind of expensive. Yeah, I mean, under four yards for all the versions, that's really not bad. All right, Luna. Next up, we have this fun little number, the Mara. It's got a little twist front, but it's more like, I don't know what's going on there. It's like tied in a knot, uh, more of a knot. She just must have really pronounced shoulders.
Here it is sleeveless. Look at that all the way down to your belly button. My goodness. And then here's a little cowl neck version with a long sleeve and a center slit. Hers has the center slit too. Okay, so this is just the other version. The red one is just a different little neckline. Yeah, it's sexy, but it's kind of subtle. I mean, granted, she doesn't, she isn't the most, you know, full figured breasted woman. She doesn't have, you know, a large chest. So, you know, keep that in mind. But it's, it's uh, cut and drafted in a way where it lays close to the body. So it doesn't feel, I don't know. I mean, yes, that is a deep front V, but it doesn't feel that deep. Here is the back. It looks like there's some elastic in here, no? And then a center back seam on the skirt, but not on the bodice. This might be made from knit. We'll have to look. So yeah, there's like more of a knot happening here. And then... This is just different sleeves, I think. And then there's the scoop. So for those of you that are more uh, well-endowed, do people still say that? <laughs> you can make that <laughs> cowl version. Yeah, okay, moderate stretch knits. Jersey interlock, velvet knit, novelty knit. I mean, let's say you're going to like the Bahamas or on, you know, some fun vacation to some tropical place. I would for sure make this for that trip. You know, a, a knit, sexy dress, even with a sleeve. I don't know. I think it's really kind of cool. And again, one of those, I don't have anything like this in my stash. That's for sure. I wouldn't wear it to Target. <laughs> I wouldn't wear it to Target in Charlotte, but I would wear it to Target in Miami or somewhere in South America or, you know, an island somewhere if they even have Targets there. All right, so you need elastic for the waist and then some seam binding. I think that's how the front is, the front seam lines are finished. And then six to 14 and 14 to 22. I mean, you don't need a ton of fabric. B, you need a lot more. Oh, for the sleeve, yeah. Okay, so B and C for the sleeve, you need about another yard. But I kind of like the Mara. I don't know. We'll see what the summer brings. All right. Next up, we've got a created. I love created patterns. This is the Edie. So the way created patterns work are, is you have, let me see. So the pattern, pattern, mm, how am I trying to explain this? The, not the pattern pieces, but the pattern parts are all numbered, and then you mix and match the numbers. So this version is a surplus bodice with a, looks like a shirt or gathered kind of uh, grown-on sleeve, some kind of defined waist, I'm assuming it's elastic, and then a pant, right? And then this one is a wide, like, draping off the shoulder neckline, still with a grown on sleeve, still with some kind of seam here, and then short. And then this is a sleeveless bodice with a uh, pant with a cuff on the bottom. So you take this pant and match it with this top or this top with this pant, and that's how you make the created. And that's how the pattern pieces are. I mean, I know that we do this all the time with our pattern pieces, but this pattern makes it easier to do that. It's less brain work um, because it's all kind of spelled out for you already. That's a beautiful jumpsuit. I love that. And I think this might be for knits as well. So yeah, this is, uh, so one is this surplus bodice and six is this pant. And then it looks like three is this bodice, four is the belt, and seven is the short. 
and then two for the bodice and five is this pant. So take pant five with bodice one, bodice three with pant six. You get what I'm saying? I love this. I love this. This with the full pant I think would be really pretty. This is really pretty, but I have something like that already. And I don't know how this would look on me. I definitely am not making a sleeveless, uh, what is it called? Strapless dress, strapless anything. Even one that doesn't have a single dart <laughs> or seam or anything. I don't even know how that's staying up. Maybe there's some elastic up top here. I don't know. We'll have to see what this says. Okay, yeah, so it is for knits. Sequin knit, velvet knit, er interlock, jersey. And then it, I think the bodices are lined. So trico for the lining. And then, okay, so for the bodices, you need one and a half yards of quarter inch elastic. I think that's for the waist seam. And then... Oh, for the misses. So misses, I think, are 8 to 16. And then for the women's sizes, 18 to 22, you need a little bit more of the elastic. For bodice 3, which is the off-the-shoulder one, a package of bias tape, pants for the little cuff here, you need some more elastic, and then all of you get seam binding. So yeah, I have no idea how this is staying up other than you've got a knit fabric and so it's you know drafted with negative ease but I ain't nobody got time for that so but I do love this bodice and it's really cool created also because I could take this bodice and pair it with any skirt that I have in my stash as well and make a dress if I didn't want to have a jumpsuit so this is really cool and I would be willing to try this with a high heel you know, but not this bodice. That is a hard no. Here are the uh, fabric requirements are all broken down based on the pattern parts. So three bodices, shorts, and your two pants. So you can mix and match fabrics this way. I don't know. It's just a really, they just take all the guesswork out of, you know, mixing up the pattern parts. So that's the Edie. We've also got, there's a lot of patterns. Okay, this is a learn to sew for fun. And something else that I learned about the new collection regarding learn to sew for fun is that they added another level. So learn to sew for fun is rated, one being super easy, two being, you know, moderately easy, and three is like for the advanced beginner. And they just added that three. So I don't know um, where it says the rating. It doesn't even say anything. What normally it has, whether it's easy or not, right here. But maybe on the pattern cover it does. So, but this is a crew neck, simple bodice with a gathered sleeve. These sleeves, I mean, almost every single pattern we've looked at today has had some kind of puffy sleeve situation. And then this one has this little sleeve ruffle. And then you've got a gathered skirt into a waist seam. And then also a little gathered ruffle here. This is really pretty. And I also love this fabric. Here's another version without the ruffle sleeves. Here's one with a little sweet neckline ruffle. Cute, cute, cute. How fun is that for like a little springtime wedding, summer wedding? I need this in my life. Yeah, it, look how good it fits. No complaints on the fit on this one, that's for sure. So, And it's a learn to sew. Oh, see, here it is, level two. See? That's really cool. And I love the new branding of this. Look, it went from this to this so pretty so learn to sew darts a puffed sleeve and an overlay this is the blight I don't know if I said that or not okay so yeah 
it's a very straightforward bodice. I have probably have 50 bodices like this in my stash already. Same thing with the gathered skirt, no big deal. Uh, the gathered sleeve would be something that would be new. And this one even has the little back darts, which is, which is really, really nice. And you saw how well that one fit too. So, and then here's the version with the little ruffles on it. And then this has the overlay. So like a lace or some kind of sheer or organza or something over top. So fabrics are cotton blends, satin, which I think that might be what she's wearing. Some kind of like printed you know, satin type uh, lame, which you don't see very often, poplin. So any kind of like the heavier side of lightweight or the lighter side of midweight uh, woven would be good. And then shears and lace for the overlay. That overlay has got me thinking that could be a lot of fun. Um... And the fact that they teach you, I guess they're teaching you how to underline. Maybe that's how it's done. I'm not sure. But, and all you need is a zipper and a hook and eye, 6 to 14, 14 to 22. The fabric is a little less than two and a half yards across the board. And then extra for C for the overlay. Cute. Cute, cute. All right, next up is this fun little guy. These square necklines also are very on trend right now. This one they made into sort of an evening look. This is the Cora. <laughs> um, just based on the fabrication. So I think this is some kind of corded lace, maybe. But it's got the square neckline, an empire waist seam, uh, princess seams from top to bottom, elastic in this little shoulder sleeve, puffy sleeve into a fitted sleeve. So that's fun. Here it is with a full puffy sleeve and a more casual type of fabric. Here it is very casual in a chambray. Yep, there she is. Very 90s, right? I think Julia Roberts wore this exact dress in Pretty Woman. Who remembers that? What? One of the ones that she tried on in the little like shopping montage, I think. Here's the back. It's the bodice is adorable. I love that. I just, you guys know, I don't really love skirts like this for me. I don't feel very comfortable in them, but I do have a lot of empire waist uh, skirts or yeah, I guess it'd be called a skirt. Um, so you could take this bodice and the sleeve and add it to anything. Cora. Here are our line drawings. Oh, there's a little slit here. Little ties. Oops. And then this one, yeah, has that lace overlay or any kind of overlay. Cotton blends, satin, velvet, denim, and then your contra contrasting fabrics. It is lined. And then a hook and eye. Oh, there's boning in here. That's really nice. Boning in the bodice. Bias tape for something and then elastic for the sleeves. 6 to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing. And because that skirt is so fitted, you can... Really not, it doesn't take a lot of fabric, even with those huge sleeves. So there you go. Next up, look at this cute little shirt dress. Alexis. Pretty. They might have made this one out of some kind of silk. So you've got your standard notch collar, patch pocket, button front, sleeve tabs, and a curved hem with a slit and maybe a sightseeing pocket. There it is in kind of like a cottony type fabric, very cute, maybe a linen. There it is without the belt, so there is no uh, waist seam. Yeah, cute. There's a back yoke and a pleat. So very traditional shirt dress 
pattern here just without a waist seam. And I think there's a couple different skirts. Oh, see, learn to sew level three. So this is the advanced beginner. And I am intrigued because sewing a notched collar is not easy. Uh, so it would be nice to see how they really break that down for people. Um, so darts, notched collar, and buttonholes are what you're going to learn making this. And that curved hem is not very easy. So that's a little nurse's outfit, right? Don't make it in white or blue. <laughs> and then, so yeah, there's this skirt with the side seam pocket. There's this skirt with the little slits on the side. And then the curved shirt tail hem. So let's see what they recommend for fabrics. Okay, good. Crepes, cotton blends, linen, and sateen. I was worried that they were going to recommend like some kind of, this looks like silk to me. Um, and that's very difficult to work with. So, but they stuck with very um, easy to sew, easy to manipulate, easy to press fabrics. So you just need some buttons, alphanumeric sizing. Yeah, this is also very forgiving on the fitting front because it's kind of loose up top, loose on bottom, and you just cinch it in with a belt in the middle. And then here's your fabric requirements. Why does a belt take one and a quarter yard of fabric? I would imagine you'd be able to fit this belt onto any of these and not have to buy extra for a belt. That's wild. So that's kind of silly. And if I were a beginner sewist, I would be very upset if I got home and figured that one and a quarter yards of my yardage was just for this little skinny little piece of fabric. All right, cool. So now we've got the Alistair. All right, the Alistair is quite the top. Uh, you've got a ruffled collar, deep V, uh, gathers under the bust, gathers across the waist, gathers at the sleeve into a gathered cuff with gathers. Gathers on gathers on gathers on gathers. Look at the back. Sexy. Here is a version with uh, some fewer gathers. Here's another one. I mean, I'm not wearing this. <laughs> I'm not wearing this. I, I just am not wearing crop tops. So yeah, there's that. And I don't even know that I would buy this to add a skirt or pant to it. You know? I don't think I love the top enough, but there are some people out there who I, I can picture in my mind who would rock this and look awesome. Just not me. So here are our line drawings. Yep. I think I found everything. And the yardage, charmeuse, crepes, crepe back satin, and chalet. 6 to 14, 14 to 22, you just need a bunch of little buttons. And then, wow, you need a lot of fabric for a little top. Wow. Okay. There you go. Alistair. That was quick. All right, here's a learn to sew for fun. And I'm assuming that this is a level one. Like, are they gonna release a one, a two, and a three each collection? Come on, internet. There we go. Uh, this is the Maddie. And I wanna see, it is a learn to sew for fun two, level two. So you've got a, half placket, 
patch pockets with the little pleated detail, long sleeves with the little cuff on them. Here is a longer version with a shirt tail hem and it has this little collar on it. Very basic collar though, not like the other one. Here it is colorless. Cute with a half tuck. Little gathers with a yoke. I mean, this is definitely, that's a difficult fabric to work with. So I'm um, interested to see. Yeah, crepe, crepe de chine, chalet, and cotton blends. But placket and band, collar, and cuffs. They don't really talk about the fabric, though. So if you are truly a beginner, I would stick with the cotton blends and the crepes. But these, like, shiny fabrics would be difficult for a true person who's learning to sew. I like the learn to sew for fun because they are easy, quick sews. It's like a palate cleanser. All right, six to 14 and 14 to 22 on the sizing, less than two yards of fabric across the board. So, yeah, I imagine all of these versions would be cute. And I do love the idea of like a long sleeve flowy, like a flowy long sleeve top. You know, I have a lot of traditional button downs, you know, that are like shirtings or whatever, but this like lightweight drapey long sleeve situation I think would be cute. Maddie. Yeah, I like this version a lot. But they're all cute. All right, next up, we've got Mia. So Mia is really cool. Mia has some kind of like drawstring situation in the neckline, a little keyhole that's actually quite deep, and then a grown on sleeve with a ruffle. And I also feel like this might be knit fabric. Like this kind of looks like ITY to me. Ooh, that one's pretty with the, is it a raglan? I like the long sleeve with the elastic cuff. And then here's another version with, I think they are raglan sleeves, but just a different sleeve detail. Simple, cute, and you can really use some special fabric because it's so basic. Very cute, Mia. Yeah, I like this a lot. And I have some ITY fabrics that I have no idea what to do with. Nothing in my pattern stash is calling out to me. I like Mia a lot. Crepe. Oh, no, it's not knit. Darn. Crepe, lame, lawn, or charmeuse. Well, that makes it a lot less cute. I mean, I know, I know, I know. I can use my ITY. That's fine. But it's not drafted for that. It's so loose fitting, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I mean, I guess the chalets and the crepes, okay, fine. But I have plenty of patterns like that. One package of bias tape and some elastic for the sleeves. Alphanumeric sizing, extra small through 2XL. And then you need... Yeah, I mean, depending on the sleeves, yeah, the sleeves are what is kicking it up there a little bit. Cool. I like Mia. Next up, another cute little top. This is the Emmy. Emmy has princess sleeves, a V neckline, obviously button fronts, gathered or pleated sleeves and sleeve bands. Cute. Very flattering, figure flattering, this Emmy. This is the shorter sleeve version. This is a crop top version, I think. 
Look how cute that is. I think this is like a little linen. I like how much it pulls away from the body at the hip. A lot of ease built in there. Super cute. A little deep on the V, but not too, too bad. Here's the back, beautiful shaping. I mean, look at this, right? That's so pretty. Yeah, so here are our three versions. It's just different lengths and three different sleeves. Poplin, shirting fabrics, cotton blends, or lightweight denim. I feel like that might be what they used here. It almost looked like a ticking. Uh, buttons and your fabric. Not a lot. Yeah, I like B a lot. A lot, a lot. Next up, we got our last little row here. All right, we've got a cute little jacket. This is the Lily. Oh, it's like a shirt that looks like a jacket. That's cute, okay, so it's a lot like the one we just saw, but it's got like a double-breasted situation, a sleeve, sewn in sleeve, and then this fun little sleeve design that's got like uh, little darts there that create this little bubble, fun. I mean, that's a top, but it looks like a jacket with the notched collar. Ooh, that one's really cute the short sleeve so cute with the white pants very very cute here it is again it's got some little bust starts so you've got the gathered sleeve or not which I actually like that um, you could look at your pattern pieces and compare and learn a little bit about what a gathered sleeve cap looks like versus what one doesn't. And I love this sleeve too. You could obviously, you know, sew this bodice with this sleeve and mix and match. I mean, if you got like a twill for this, it could definitely just be a little jacket. So you'd have a shirt and a jacket pattern. It just wouldn't be lined. That's the only thing I think that would maybe differentiate it from like a true jacket pattern. Linen, cotton blends, crepes, and denim. Do you need your buttons? 6 to 14, 14 to 22 on the sizing. And you really don't need a ton of fabric, con even considering that it kind of wraps. Um, this is the short sleeve version. This is like the bigger balloon sleeve. And then this is the long sleeve. So there you go. Cute lily. Next up is this little skirt, the Jamie. So asymmetrical, buttons on the side, it has a waistband and um, a little ruffle on the bottom. Here it is without the ruffle. A like, midi skirt length. Yeah, I don't love the fabrication here. Like I'm not wearing like a silky skirt anywhere. But these versions I can see in a more stable fabric, heavier weight fabric, and it would be cute. There you go. Yeah, pretty simple. Crepe. Chalet, cotton blends, and charmeuse. So they're really wanting you to pick something lightweight and drapey. Hmm. You need your buttons, six to 14 and 14 to 22 sizes. And then less than two yards across the board. Um, golly, if you're itty bitty, you don't even need a yard of fabric for the one version. The one yard wonder. Well, I mean, like I said, you could probably eke out, um, especially like if you made your waist, the inside of your waistband out of a contrast fabric, you could probably get it done in the yard. It, they're, this is one that they're talking about. So, cool. I mean, again, I'm not really wearing like a silky skirt anywhere. I mean, it looks fine for her, I guess. I just, it's just not my style. Um, 
I'm even trying to think if I would wear it in a crepe or chalet. And I just, I don't know about lightweight skirts. Yeah, I don't know. Not for me, I don't think. All right. We've got the Abby pants. Oh, these are interesting. So you've got a fly front, a button fly front, traditional waistband with the belt loops, but look at all this seaming. You've got a front yoke, a front seam, patchish, patch pocket kind of looking thing. Here they're doing it in contrast denims. Here is a not patch pocket, it has the um, slash pockets. All right, kind of a cropped length. The back has a yoke, but the yoke is straight across and it has the, um, I don't know what those, it's not flat filled. What's it called whenever they're pressed open? Or maybe it is flat filled. Hard to tell. Interesting. You would think based on these line drawings that it would be very like unflattering, but it looks really good on her. Although we don't have any pictures of her without her hands in the pockets. And that really annoys me. I want to see what it looks like when you're just standing normally. So you can also add patch pockets to the back. Oh, and then this version has the little slit here, which is kind of cute detail. I mean, I'm not here yet on the pants, <laughs> but um, I think this would be really cute on a lot of different people. It's, it, even like curvy girls, I think. Um, if you can figure out how to get pants to fit you, no matter what size you are, I think these would be really cute. Denim, twill, linen, and chino, five buttons, six to 14, and then 14 to 22 on the sizing. And then anywhere from two, well, C, what is C? Oh, because the contrast. Okay. So yeah, anywhere from like two to two and a half yards. Yep. Abby. All right, here's our last one. Looks like it's going to be a romper and a jumpsuit. Oh, it's like a flight suit. Ugh. Not a fan. This is the Trudy. Um, geez. Okay, you've got a collar, a button, front. I think that's what I don't like about these is the button front on a jumpsuit just seems so weird to me. And it's like already annoying enough to get out of a jumpsuit to go to the bathroom. But now you have to unbutton all of these on top of that. You know, I will say though, the pant line with this is adorable. I love the pant line a lot, but okay. What else? You've also got a set in sleeve. I think some kind of maybe a pleat that opens. It's just pleated instead of the darts. Maybe you got slash pockets. This one, they added a little patch pocket to the top and shortened the sleeve. Maybe it'd be cuter in a short. I don't know. Here it is, long sleeve and long pant. This pant is very intriguing to me. Let me see what the back of the pant looks like. I think they made this out of some kind of linen blend. <laughs> little itty teeny tiny pockets which would not look good on any size higher than six <laughs> you've got a yoke and a pleat the nice big wide belt though I do like that a lot the fit on her if you remove these pockets um the fit on the pant is just really good there's just you know it's loose fitting but not wide legged. So I guess I'd have to like 
check the calf measurement and make sure that was all good. But I, yeah, I kind of like the, the pant a lot. Here's your line art. Collarless for this little collar. Yeah, there are going to be some people making some really cute versions of this. Twill, linen, cotton blends, denim, totally. I mean, I would even make this shorts version, I think. Add a denim and a belt. So, yeah, I want to do that. I have plenty of denim in my stash. And I'm not making jeans, so I've got to find something to do with it. All right, nine buttons and some elastic and a buckle for the belt. 6 to 14 and 14 to 22. The shorts version, you need just about two yards. And then the two different pants get you, uh, and the collar. One of them has a collar. So that's the difference is there. Wow, you guys, what do we think? What do we think? So many changes. Look how pretty the lookbook is. Um, branding wise, so many changes pattern wise, so many really cute patterns. Um, yeah, I'm sure you guys have a lot of thoughts, but look how pretty the lookbook is and the names and the learn to sew for fun changes. I'm excited for McCall's. They really put a lot of work into this. You can really tell. There are probably tons of meetings. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I'm impressed. It's a good collection. And I think we all know the last, I mean, 2019 was not great. Uh, but there are a lot of really great patterns here. And you know, the direction that the company is taking. It feels fresh and new and exciting. Um, yeah, I, I want to know. I want to know you guys' thoughts and opinions on, on everything. Let me know in the comments section below. And I hope you enjoyed this surprise first impression Sunday. <laughs> I will see you all again very soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye.